Abandoned Dune movie with Mick Jagger and Salvador Dali sounds a little spicy. In the director's chair won Alejandro Jodorowsky. He wanted to create an unforgettable work of art from Frank Herbert's saga of sand and blood. It was unforgettable, all right, just not for the right reasons. Production shut down within a couple of years. How did this extraordinary and elaborate undertaking come and go like a sandworm chasing a meal in the desert? Far Out Magazine writes, with some critics calling it the greatest film never made, Jodorowsky's vision of what Dune should have been is truly mesmerizing. The Chilean-French artist may not have been everyone's idea of a first choice. 1970s, El Topo was a radical western, a variation on Django with a psychedelic approach. Set in an arid landscape, the title character, who Jodorowsky played himself, could conceivably have been part of Dune. But the project was fueled by creative rather than commercial concerns. Van Gogh cut an ear. Jodorowsky, now 91, told Den of Geek this year, but I don't see a director of Hollywood cutting an ear there because he cannot make this picture. Follow-up feature, The Holy Mountain, 1973, attracted money from fans such as John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Jodorowsky reportedly deprived himself of sleep for a week so he could hit that surrealist sweet spot. He was becoming a counterculture hit with the shooting of a sci-fi phenomenon, a logical or illogical next step. An earlier attempt to adapt Dune fell through. Previous producers wanted David Lean, Florence of Arabia, to wield the megaphone, but he wasn't interested. An indication of the colossal task anyone would face bringing Frank Herbert's world to the screen. Herbert's first book, published in 1965, tells the story of hero Paul Entrides and the power struggles between noble families in a planetary system of the far future. At stake is the spice, a drug enabling users to literally fold space. A French-backed consortium bought the property and signed Jodorowsky. He envisaged a movie approximately 10 hours in length, packed with fantastical sights and vivid adult imagery. Among the production designers was H.R. Geiger, a few years before he helped create Ridley Scott's Alien. Scott was involved in his own movie adaptation later on, where he and Geiger first crossed paths. On special effects duty for Dune was Dan O'Bannon. Coincidentally, he wound up co-writing the first chapter of the Xenomorph franchise after Jodorowsky's film collapsed. Jodorowsky hired a diverse selection of talent to populate this unique universe. Orson Welles was to play villain Baron Harkonnen. He may have been flattered to learn the director based Dune's planned opening shot on Welles' A Touch of Evil from 1958. Mick Jagger would portray Fade Rautha, the Baron's twisted relation who opposes Entreides. John Rowski wanted son Brontus to take the soul of Paul. The pair starred together in El Topo. Other names in the picture were Gloria Swanson, Elaine Delon, Geraldine Chaplin, and David Carradine. Hervé Villachez, who found big scream fame the same year as Nick Knack in The Man with the Golden Gun, was cast as Gurney Halleck. Surrealist met Surrealist when Salvador Dali accepted the part of Emperor Shaddam IV. Though Dali was more a cold hard realist when it came to his fee, it seems $100,000 per hour. John Arowski's plan was to film him for 60 minutes before shooting the rest with a mannequin. Fresh off their success with The Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd were to compose the music. Before they could step up to the studio, however, the sound of a bell tolled. $2 million was already spent. The team couldn't raise the reported $15 million needed to keep their head above water, or to be more accurate, sand. So the dream died. Another art house director took the reins of Dune in 1984. The movie flopped with audiences and some critics. Jodorowsky dragged himself to see it in Paris. I was so happy, he says, interviewed by IndieWire this year, so happy, so happy, because it was a shitty picture. I realized, Dune, nobody can do it. It's a legend. The Sci-Fi Channel adapted Frank Herbert's Dune for the small screen beginning in 2000. Now fans are waiting for Dennis Villeneuve's version, 
landing in December and starring Timothy Chalamet. Jodorowsky is receptive to the recently released trailer but believes the end product to be industrial cinema, den of geek, rather than anything on his level.